Hey, it's Nikki with FM99. I am live with Brent Smith of Shine Down. Thank you so much for coming to chat with me today. It's my pleasure. It's good to see you. How's everything in your world? How's your family? How's everybody doing? Everybody's good. This crazy world that we're living in, we're, you know, I think all doing the best that we can. I think we're all on our toes. Yes. A lot of obstacles, a lot of things to, you know, duck and dive, bob and weave, if you know what I mean. You got to, uh, you have to take it all with the, uh, not necessarily a grain of salt, but every day is a new challenge, but you gotta be optimistic in these times. It's a great way to say it, yes. 2020, I don't think is at all what any of us could have ever guessed it was gonna be. So it'll make for a great story someday. Yeah, you know, you gotta learn from it. That's right, yeah. So you guys have been to multiple luau's. I actually have been able to interview your band a couple times, but I've never talked to you. So I'm really stoked to be able to actually be talking to you this time. It's my honor and my pleasure. I'm, I'm glad we can have this time today. Thanks for letting me be a part of the show. Absolutely. So tell me, what have you been doing in this craziness? How's quarantine been to you? I mean, for me personally, it was something where the band right now, myself and Zach and Barry and Eric, this was a creative year for Shinedown. I'm actually in Nashville right now with Zach. We're in the middle of a photo shoot. Okay. Right now, I'm just jumping in here to, to speak with you. Once again, thank you for having me on the show for the new Smith & Myers project that's going to be released later this year. Um, we also have, uh, we're just in the final stages of the editing uh, that has gone over and over because it's a lot of detail for the attention, attention, major motion picture that's going to be coming out. Uh, we're, we have our fingers crossed for November. Um, we want to have it released in theaters, but we need to be respectful of that. So it's either going to go out in theaters or it's going to be mass produced and you'll be able to get it out all across the world. Um, and we're finishing up a uh, an editing on a show that we did in London last year, 2019. Um, so in a little bit, everybody's going to get, I know people are jonesing for a Shinedown show. I know us in Shinedown, we're jonesing to play for people, but <laughs> we were able to record this show last year at the O2 Arena in London. So that's going to be coming out here pretty quickly for everybody uh, to hopefully, you know, it's about an hour and a half show, but we wanted to make sure that we filmed it last year. So obviously it was going to be used. We didn't realize it was necessarily going to be used because of what was going on right now, but I'm glad we have it. So uh, yeah, it, this was a creative year for us to begin with. And I mean, we, unfortunately we had to end up canceling the deep dive tour because we kept rescheduling it. And it was just something for us where we didn't want to keep holding people's money and not actually know what we were going to be able to do. So we uh, we ended up canceling that, making sure everybody got their money back for that. Um, but we've not stopped under any circumstances with the creativity. We actually have a lot of things that are going to be coming out this year. I had uh, we're, we're here in Nashville until about uh, after the 4th of July. And then we head to Charleston, South Carolina, because we're going to begin writing the seven Shinedown record starting July 10th. So, that is awesome. Yeah. You are and just educating, you know, educating myself on everything that's been going on with this pandemic. Obviously, our relationship with uh, Direct Relief has been something that's a uh, that's a that's a huge deal for us because of how important Direct Relief is and everything that you guys are doing uh, in support of Atlas Falls. And, um, you know, we're almost at the uh, we just crossed the four hundred thousand dollar mark that we've raised for direct relief during this pandemic and continuing to do so and and keep people informed and in, to why direct relief is so important because they're the Calvary in crisis situations. Uh, so I want to thank the fan base and obviously the station for two decades of support, but also really helping with Atlas Falls and, and putting that message of positivity out there and optimism, because I think that's the that's the key right now is, you know, I really, really good friend of mine, a doctor in Kansas City. I've, I've mentioned him before, but when all of this went down, as I was educating myself on what was actually going on, he he really did kind of give me perspective. He said, you know what, Brent, all pandemics have one thing in common, and that is they all ended. It just really depends on science and it depends on the people and how we navigate through this, but uh, it will end eventually. I love that actually. That's, I like that positivity. That's something that all of us need to hang on to, to be able to get each other through this. I mean, it's, you know, it's one of those things that uh, regardless of what rips us apart, this is something that has ultimately brought us together. Good, bad, Absolutely. or different. So uh, getting through that is, is a big deal. So. 
You mentioned Atlas Falls. Now you guys, that's not a new song for you. It's a new song for us. We're just hearing it, but it's not a new song for you. Tell me about that. So the song, um, during the, the writing process for the album, our fourth record, Amaryllis, we're known for when we're in the studio, we'll write a lot of songs, but we don't really demo songs. And what I mean by that is we don't like write a song and then just kind of do a, a scratch vocal and like an acoustic or just lay down a couple of parts and just to get the idea and then move to the next song. We, once the song's written, we record it like it's for real, like it's going on an album. Yeah. And um, it also keeps us in check in the band to really push the envelope on each and every song. Uh, try never to have an album with any kind of filler. But in regards to when you write a lot of songs for an album, you're obviously going to have something left over. Just because a song doesn't make the record doesn't make it a bad song. It just right. makes that it maybe it wasn't right for that particular piece. Um, Atlas was written towards the, the back half of the writing process for, for Amaryllis for that album cycle. Yes. Um, and for whatever reason, I really don't remember why it actually didn't make the record. I think it was Very more tough. that we felt like we had enough. Yep. Um, and so, but I always had a kinship to that song and I always felt like it would see the light of day eventually. I didn't necessarily know that it was going to be to this magnitude. Um, but yeah, the song was written eight years ago. And it's interesting too, because people have said, well, when did you get time to like go into the studio and, you know, kind of make it sound more like 2020? And obviously you had to have changed some of the lyrics because you wrote from what's going on now. And I said, no, the song is, the song you hear today is the same song it was eight years ago. So, um, but that whole message of that song is about perseverance. It's about, um, it's about coming together and finding the optimism in some of the most chaotic and devastating situations and understanding that you're not alone and you should be able to depend on your fellow, you know, brother and sister, um, you know, man, woman, and child, you know, I don't mean to be so like, I mean, the way that I see that song, because the premise of that song is about the God of endurance, who was Atlas. And Atlas was a young man uh, who had kind of like piss and vinegar in him. And he kind of challenged the Titans and he lost. And so Zeus needed to yeah. uh, Zeus needed to, I think, teach him a lesson in some ways of humility. So he placed the weight of the world on his shoulders you know and the question in the song was well what if atlas was to fall who would help atlas and that's where we come in you know we have to lift each other up and that's really the basis of the song and i think why it's extremely relevant um in this day and age especially now it absolutely is. i mean when i heard the song i couldn't believe that it was written when you guys were doing amaryllis because like it like you said you've heard it's so fitting i mean just with everything that's happening in the world right now it's so fitting um so Direct Relief, what made you choose them? Is that somebody that you had worked with previously or did you go looking for somebody? Like kind of how did that work? It was very natural actually. Um, it was that first weekend, me and Zach were, we're obviously we're working on a double Smith & Myers record right now. And uh, we were in California, we were in the midst, we had finished 17 of the 20 songs Zach was getting ready to go back to Memphis for like a couple of weeks and then come back to California so we could finish the the, the last three yeah. and the pandemic happened. Right. And so I remember that first weekend where government was like, we're not asking you to go to war. We're asking you to stay home and watch Netflix. Right. That lasted for me about two hours on a Saturday morning. And I just was like, I, I can't do this. Like. Yeah. I knew nothing about coronavirus. I knew nothing about COVID-19. I didn't understand SARS. I, um, trying to educate myself on, I didn't understand what a pandemic was. I had never heard the term social distancing. Um, so I needed to educate myself. So what I ended up doing was I just dove into the internet and just tried to find out as much information as I possibly could upon looking at everything I came across direct relief. And the astonishing thing about it is so, for people that don't know, Direct Relief has actually been in existence since 1948. They are based in Santa Barbara, California. Their sole mission and their mission statement is they are there to aid the people that are the professionals on the ground during times of crisis, whether it's a poverty, whether it's a natural disaster, a pandemic, anything of that nature. And they're the Calvary. So, their goal is to get 
all the requirements and all the necessary things that these professional men and women in the scientific and the medical community need on the ground so that they can right. save as many lives as possible. And so they were massively instrumental in the beginning of this uh, pandemic. And they're still very, very, um, they're very necessary and very important because yeah. they were here before COVID-19. They'll be here after COVID-19. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't, they have no political agenda. They are completely non-biased. It's just about saving as many lives as possible during times of crisis. So we reached out to them and, uh, gave them the idea of what we wanted to do with the t-shirt and the release of the song at the time the song could only be downloaded if you were to buy the shirt it cost five dollars to make the atlas falls shirt the rest of the proceeds go to direct release so even now you can go to shinedown.com if you see the atlas falls shirt you can click on it if you buy the shirt 100 percent of those proceeds will forever by the way go from that shirt all the money that's ever raised as long as the shirt is in existence, will always go to direct relief. And um, because of wonderful people like yourselves um, and Shine Down Nation, you know, we've we've recently crossed the four hundred thousand dollar mark that we've raised, and uh, it's just going to continue to go and hopefully, uh, you know, spread more awareness of why direct relief is so important in times like these. Absolutely, yeah. I I I mean, I'm embarrassed to say that I hadn't heard of them, you know, before this. Well, neither had I. You have no reason to feel embarrassed. I hadn't heard of them either. I, I came across them. One of the reasons I came across them, too, I believe, was that um, I had noticed an article in Forbes magazine, actually, about them because they have, like, the highest level of... Um, and I, I'd have to get more detail in how they, they break this down. But if you go to directrelief.com, which directrelief.org actually is how you look it up, it, they do running time like right this minute. They show you minute by minute where they are sending PPE to, where it's going, how much of it's going, how much money they've raised, how much money is going back into these communities, into these countries, because that's something else about them that's extraordinary. They work with all 50 states in the U.S., but they work with over 100 countries. Amazing. And it's pretty, it's pretty astonishing. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're just very, very important. I can't help but think that, you know, that first phone call, like, hey, it's Brent Smith from Shinedown. They're like, right. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it was a little unique. It, uh, what we ended up doing was, so one of our day-to-day -day managers um, at Indigood Entertainment, um, because we have been managed by Bill McGaffey and McGaffey Promotions our entire career, two decades now. And we've also been with the same record company, Atlantic Records for over two decades. And both Atlantic Records and Indigoot, they were massively instrumental in helping us do this also with Direct Relief. Um, and yeah, it really was a phone call from management first. They needed to kind of do some background checks and see, because they weren't really aware of the band. And so when they went in and they looked, we have a wonderful liaison there that we work with. His name is Samir. He's kind of our point person there at Direct Relief. and. Um, we just told them what we wanted to do and how we wanted to do it. And uh, we created a legitimate partnership with them. That's going to, you know, be a partnership for, uh, for life because um, they're just such a wonderful organization and they help so many, many people. Um, so, you know, any acknowledgement that we could bring to them uh, to the rest of the world and help kind of spread the word of how important this organization is, we were down to do it. And we work with a lot of charities. We work with the Red Cross, we work with St. Jude's, we work with, you know, the United Way, we work with Goodwill, yeah. we work with Salvation Army, um, a lot of different charities. Um, but for this particular situation that we were in, you know, they were the one that, you know, they really raised their hand as, you know, this organization is really getting the people on the front line, what they need, the professionals, yeah. so that they can save as many lives as possible. Yeah, it's phenomenal. I mean, what a great charity. So I've got to yeah, ask they're awesome. with the Atlas Falls, did you guys like just hop on a call and say, now's the time? You know, how did that happen? You know, where, where you decided like Atlas Falls needs to come out of the vault? I pretty much knew pretty instantaneously. Like once I found Direct Relief, the song like, popped into my head. Um, once again, you know, I always had a kinship with that song and I was always like, eventually the song will be heard. 
Um, and I just remembered the lyrical content. I remembered the essence of the song. And I felt like that it would be, um, I felt like it would be a strong symbol of optimism and, and um, not defiance, but the, uh, something that could support the human spirit. You know, I've said this before, like, you know, music is such a powerful part of our lives and our existence, especially when you talk about songs. I mean, the wonderful thing about that art form is that a song can be whatever you need it to be at that place and time in yeah. your life. And it can evolve to yeah. you and what it means to you. And I just felt like it was a song that, um, I remember when we wrote it, how it made me feel. And I just wanted to try to hopefully put some of that out into the world because there was just a ton of negativity in the, in the beginning of all of this, there's still negativity. But the fact is, is that, um, you know, if we unite, really unite with each other, I don't think that there's anything that we can achieve as a species, um, okay. as, you know, as human beings, um, because I think that human beings were at our best when we need each other. And I think that's really the symbolism of the song more than anything. It's just, we are at our best when we need one another. Yes, and we need one another right now. Very much. For sure. Yeah. So you already mentioned, so you've got the Smith and Myers album. It's a double album, right? Double Coming. album. Ten, yeah. 10 covers, 10 covers that were picked by the audience and expressed to us by the audience. Love um, it. But for the very, very first time, 10 completely original songs. Okay. And so that is a release date? I can't My give it to you yet. <laughs> okay. I can tell you this. It's, it's, it's soon. Okay, good. All right. It's soon. Sure. Good, because yeah. we, you know, new music is, we, we need it. Let's just say you'll know what's happening this month. Okay, I- You'll, I, you're, I, you're gonna, you'll, you'll have it all laid out this month. Okay, fair enough, I'll take that. I won't push any harder, I'll take that, that's awesome. So you've got the movie yep. coming out hopefully in November. Well, it will come out, just whether it's in theaters yeah. or um, then the, the London show. Yep. Other than that, you've got nothing going on. <laughs> And then we're gonna um, write. The sh we're gonna write Shine Down Seven. Right. So that's what I'm say. So so working on uh, on new Shine Down music also, which is yep. amazing. Yep. Um, now the deep dive tour. Obviously, you had to cancel. Are we? Do we have? Are we trying to reschedule for 2021, or is it kind of like a wait and see type thing right now? Right now, what's actually happening is. Um, it, it's kind of unique. We just did a soft launch. Uh, Zach is in the midst of this. So Zach Myers handles all of our merchandise okay. and we work collectively with Warner Merch and some amazing people, uh, Jody there at Warner Merch and Matt Young there. And then also our, our, um, our merch director for the band, his name is Mr. Uh, Mr. Kent Sinkler. All these people are very important. Okay. We have, they, they've just gone in and the line that we're getting ready to release here in a moment is it's, it's pretty out of this world from the merchandise side okay. of things, but we made all the deep dive merch already for yeah. the, so, but we have no tour, but we have the merch. So we're, like, we're just gonna release the merch because eventually we will do the tour. <laughs> well, we're like, yeah, just give them the merch now. So they'll have their merch ready when we do the tour. <laughs> yes, I love it. Okay, good. So it's it's still out there. It's still a possibility. Yeah, I mean, it really comes down to, um, you know, look, and another element of all this is that we are all in the music industry right now and really in the, in the live entertainment industry, we are working diligently to understand exactly how live events are going to return and how they're going to return. Yeah, um, I want to keep something in people's mindset though. And, and everybody's going to have an opinion about this. And some people may be like, well, that's your opinion, Brent. And I'm like, I know it's my opinion, but it's opinion off of facts. <laughs> and the reality yeah. is that I know that if you look at mainstream media right now, they focus on two elements of the case studies of COVID-19, the amount of cases and the death. You are never shown in any mainstream media the recovery rates. Right. And even when the surges happen, they don't tell you like, yes, you may have had these surges, 
But that doesn't mean all of those people are hospitalized. That doesn't mean right. all of those people have died. It means that, right. yes, we've had more positive cases. Positive. But if, right. if you go back three months ago, it was a lot of conversations about we need more testing. We need more testing. We need more testing. Well, now I'm reading articles where people are saying things like, you know, maybe America has too many tests now. So I'm like, you can't do this seesaw thing much longer because there's got to be a level of leadership that brings us to the other side of this. And I'm going to tell people right now, and I am very outspoken about this because I want people to be educated. You got to hunt for some of this. Yeah. Um, I think as of today, it's roughly 11 million cases worldwide. I think we unfortunately have crossed. Now, this is worldwide. I'm not talking about just America. I'm talking about globally. Yes. Worldwide, we're at about 11 million cases, over right around 505,000 deaths. Mm -hmm. um, but you're also at almost 6 million recoveries. Right. Huge they, number. Please, 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 if you don't take anything from this, from what I'm saying here, educate yourself on the big picture. Yes. That's something that really needs to be expressed to people. It's a virus, but it's not the first virus in human history. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's something that I think it gets overlooked. Even today, there was, I think that it was, uh, if I recall right this morning from the Mayo Clinic. Now, obviously if you're 65 and older, Whole different ballgame. But if you have a pre-existing condition or you have something of the mindset that it's something that you know you have to be careful with anyway, yeah. you know, but you need treatment for whatever that condition is. This is also, you know, caused a lot of complications when it comes to people, especially people that couldn't get treatment during, you know, if they had cancer right. or okay. if they were on dialysis and things of that nature. But one thing that I finally am seeing the mainstream media do, which is something that I tried to do very early on when I was talking about this, was you have the power to change your diet if you're not healthy right now. You have the power to start a workout program. Even if you've never worked out in your life, it's not like you're going to start on a Monday and by the Sunday you're going to be able to do a decathlon. Okay, <laughs> like, But just the actual steps of going out and getting your diet better, you know, read up about it, you know, start an exercise program. If you don't take them, you know, take a multivitamin, you know, one of the things that will help your immune system drastically and, and efficiently will help you is vitamin D. Yeah. And I'm not a doctor and you need to get your blood <laughs> tested. You need to go to your doctor and, and do a physical. But as of this morning from the Mayo Clinic, it, it plainly said, if you are in good health, and you take care of yourself, um, if you were to contract the virus, they put it at a 98% recovery rate. Right. And, and some people, I guess, and there. some people get mad because they're like, well, they don't know that. And I'm like, well, if they're looking at the statistics, then that's what they have to gauge it off of. Why, so, why the hostility of us getting on the other side of it? Like, do you want to stay inside forever? Yeah. You know, no. or do you want to come out of this? Yes, please. Yeah. All right. I've got some um, some questions and comments, if you don't mind. Yeah, man. Let me have it. Um, okay. So, um, well, let's see. Ann Miller. Hey, Brent, do you remember me from Lunatic Luau last year? I brought you birthday cake Oreos. Remember, you know what? I quite frequently people bring me birthday cake double stuffed Oreos because it's my favorite like dessert. Okay. Um, and I am going to say, yes, I do remember her. Okay. Everybody that brings me birthday cake Oreos, they're forever still trapped. Oh, they're, there you go. They're, in, they're in here and they're in my heart forever. You bring me <laughs> birthday cake Oreos, you're in there. <laughs> uh, okay, so you've got 15 number ones on the mainstream rock chart, which is the most tied with Three Days Grace. What does that accomplishment mean for the band? It's interesting because it's it's 15 on Billboard, but it's 16 on Media Base, tied both with our boys in Three Days Grace. Okay. Um, it I mean it should be an easy question to answer. I'm I just uh, I'm still astonished by it. I I just I I really am. I mean, 
technically Alice Falls is the 27th single we've released as a band. Amazing. And um, our entire existence is because of our fan base. Our entire existence is because of the audience. I've said this and I've, I've said it more than once because it holds true. Uh, everybody in Shinedown, we have one boss. It just happens to be everyone in the audience. <laughs> yes. So um, it's an honor. It really is. It's uh, we, we take it very, very seriously and we're very humbled by it. Um, but we also want to give a lot of credit to terrestrial radio because we know that there's different DSPs now and you know you have different ways of streaming music and what have you, but terrestrial radio has been there for this band from day one. And um, we will always keep our fist in the air for, for all of you, you know, guys and girls. But uh, yeah, we got to give a lot of respect to terrestrial radio because they're one of the, the big reasons we've had, you know, a two, two decade career in this and uh, we're not slowing down. Yes, please don't. Okay, what is the most memorable connection you've made when it comes to fans of your music? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Other than um, for you. <laughs> you know, I, I'll never, I'll, I'll never take it lightly. Um, and I, and I, I know how to take a compliment. I used to, in the beginning, kind of be aw shucks about everything. And you would find like when somebody would compliment me that I just, it was almost like I couldn't handle it. Yep. And then you learn um, that there's a lot of respect in uh, the reciprocation of a compliment and the acceptance of that and saying thank you. I take all of those compliments and I try to put it back into my work ethic. And I try to be the hardest worker in the room. I try to be the best songwriter I can be. I try to be the best person I can be. I'm very, very lucky that I'm in a band with my three best friends in the world, Eric, Barry, and Zach. So I never take that for granted either because we always keep each other accountable. It's one of the reasons why we still ride the same bus together. We still go into the same dressing room with each other every day when we are touring and what have you. And it's why we, it's why we love one another. But I think when I, it's the stories where someone tells you that you've had something to do with saving their life because of your music, or yes. it's a family member that has come to you that didn't really know your music, but their daughter or their son or somebody in their family, something about your, your art form and your music has given them hope, it's given them perseverance, it's given them tenacity, it's given them their confidence back. Um, that's probably, we take that the most seriously, more than anything. Um, and we try to be respectful of it and we try to always be honest with them and always let them know that we're always gonna, we're always gonna give them our 100% at all times. I love that. Okay, uh, do, uh, do you think the music scene has changed since you released your first album and with the popularity of your band, uh, do you think it's changed your outlook on life? It's a deep it's one. Definitely, it's, it's changed drastically in regards to how songwriters make royalty money. Yep. Um, because of DSPs and because of, of streaming, you have a different kind of currency now, which is digital. Yep. Um, what we had to kind of do with that is we had to understand there's a great movie called Moneyball that's actually about true events, yeah. um, the Oakland A's uh, when they went to the, the World Series. But so it has Jonah Hill in this film and Brad Pitt. And there's a moment in that movie where Jonah Hill looks at Brad Pitt and he goes, you have to do one thing if you want to survive. And that is you're going to have to adapt or die. And it's how you adapt though. Of course. It's not completely giving up on it and just being like, well, you throw your hands up and well, it's over, we're screwed. It's never gonna be that. You have to learn how to, and this is, this is ethics in a lot of ways too. They call it the music business for a reason. Yes. You know, it's, it's one of the same things when I tell people, young artists will come to me and they'll say, what is the advice to do what you do? Right. And I always tell them, you have to have it from two angles. You have to look at it one side, which be, the first side is always the most important, and that's the art. That's, that's the integrity, and that's the, the music, that's the, the performance, and that's the message and the material. But when you look at the business side, you can't kind of be the aw shucks artist or my people take care of that kind of thing. You need to know 
how the industry works. So I think that I, where if you go back 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, it was a party and people were just kind of living out, you know, the cliches. But the guys and girls that caught it early enough to understand that it was changing and that you really needed to be educated on the financial side of things, percentage sides of things, these new ways of listening to music started to just kind of come into the fold. And a lot of people were like, that's not going to work. It's never going to happen. I wasn't one of those people. I, I had my eyes open and my ears open. I asked a lot of questions. Yeah. And you have to understand that to be in the music business nowadays. You have to look and see. Obviously, you have to be ready for anything because yeah. one element of what we do to, you know, make money as a as an artist is we t- we're known for to- for touring relentlessly. Oh yeah. And that has just completely stopped. So, you have to know how to navigate. You have to know how to adapt. Absolutely. Yes, which you guys have done clearly beautifully. Uh, thank you for writing Get Up. It has helped me so much and many others. How's Eric, Barry, and Zach doing? They're great. I'm actually with Zach right now. We're uh, we're in Nashville at the moment. We're doing uh, photo ops right now for the Smith & Myers Project. Yes. Um, we're all going to see Eric in 10 days, be in Charleston, and as we begin uh, writing Shine Down 7. Barry's doing awesome. Um, the good thing about the guys is everybody's been able to hang out with their families a lot and and our kids. The good thing about so, this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that's been one of the that's been one of the, the greatest things about all of this is just being able to be with our families, you yeah. know, and you know that kind of a, a timeout, if you will. And some people were kind of like, it's it's a forced timeout. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, it's we're very grateful for it in a lot of ways because we are on the road so much. This was something where it was almost like it wasn't up to us. Right. You know, but inside of that, we've, you know, we've been able to reconnect not only with each other, but we've just been able to spend time with our kids. And, you know, we're very lucky that we live in a technologically advanced world. So FaceTime has been good between, you know, me and the band and things like that. Um, But uh, we're also, trying to get to the next step with everything. But uh, yeah, we don't, we don't take any of that for granted. So I'm glad that that individual likes Get Up. That's one of my favorite songs ever, but everyone's doing really, really well. I think we're all kind of jonesing to, to start start writing this next Shining Down record and see how we're gonna have to maneuver the return uh, to to live events. It, it, it's, it's, it's going to come back. It's gonna have to come back in a way that is, um, it's going to be a different protocol. Yes, it's going to look know. a little different, I think. Yeah. I but think don't that. take any, you know, the, the other side of that also, something to take into consideration is don't have a knee jerk reaction when someone says the new normal, because that can be and should be a good thing. Because a lot of what I've seen, a lot of the discussions I've been in with a lot of the people that are our vendors, people that we've worked with for over two decades now from our trucking, our buses, our lighting, our pyrotechnics, our staging, all of these types of elements, that infrastructure and the buildings and the festivals and the, you know, the clubs and the theaters and the stadiums and all these places with mass gatherings are just, you know, they're all doing the infrastructure right now to massively take the sanitation level and standard way up. Yeah. You know, uh, when so when you come into these these buildings and stuff like that, it's not nasty. It's not dirty. It's clean, you know. Yeah, and like adding, <laughs> yeah adding these things to where, you know, it's it, it's keeping people accountable for things. Um, one of the biggest things that we know is that the UV light therapy in these buildings is a huge it is huge for that because it just annihilates a lot of viruses. This a, a lot of that's been in the news here lately, but. There's a lot of arenas right now. There's a lot of different places, clubs, theaters that are getting ready to be able to have that standard to make their environment clean for their patrons and make it safe for everybody to come in. And that's not a bad thing. Yeah, agreed. I agree. As long as we get back to us some live music soon. Uh, let's see. Tyler says, I have my two-year-old hooked on Shine Down. We love you guys. We hope to see you all back in Virginia Beach soon. That is very true. I, uh, I mirror that remark for sure. Uh, Allison said, I hope concerts go back to normal so I can still give you guys hugs. You give the best ones. 
I've been in Nashville, and I've uh, I know some people are like, oh, look at him, he's, he's but, but it's, it's I don't know, I guess it's shocking to me or whatever. I don't like I'm not walking around like gig ready, you know what I mean? Like look at I'm I'm like I'm like wearing a dad shirt, you know? <laughs> it's just, I'm not like walking out like with what I wear on stage, you know what yeah. I mean? But I've been recognized more today and yesterday. You know, I've been out more and what have you, but. It's so funny. There's, a, there's everybody that's in the last few days that I've been in Nashville that they've seen me and they're like, are you? And I'm like, I am. And they're like, can I please hug you? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, not afraid. I, 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 I will never be afraid to hug anyone. Uh, Steve said, man, going back and looking at what 45 meant to me, then coming forward to Monsters and Get Up, your music shows the healing process and really does resonate with me. And I think I mean, that's that's that way across the board, I feel, is, uh, you know, we, we've we followed your music and, and the changes in them and um, they've resonated with me as well, so. Uh. Once again, thank you very much. And those, com those, those types of comments mean a great deal to me and I don't take it lightly under any circumstances. I, I've often said that I'm the main lyricist in the band, but I can't do it without Eric and I can't do it without Barry. And I can't do it without Zach and I wouldn't want to, but we in the band, we've always had a collective thought process when it comes to, you know, the subject matter in these songs. 99% yes. of the Shinedown material, it comes from a real moment in time. It comes from real experiences. It comes from either a situation or a scenario or a person or a place or something in our lives that touched us or made us who we are. Um, you know, and obviously we, we've written songs for, you know, we've been commissioned to write songs for films and TV yeah. and stuff like that. And we do that. And we love doing that when there's already a plot and they want us to write upon that. But when it comes to us, we've often said that uh, we write songs because it's cheaper than therapy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's cheaper so, to listen to than therapy, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's awesome. Well, we love you guys. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. And uh, my pleasure. Just like everybody else has resonated, I uh, I really look forward to the day that you guys can come back to Virginia Beach and we can see you live again. I, I want I want everybody to know that it, it is going to happen. It it may uh, it may take a moment. Um, it will obviously take certain people a little longer to feel comfortable. But I make you a very real and solemn promise. The number one thing, and we were always doing this before this pandemic happened, um, but I want to rest everyone assured from us to our fan base, whether you've been there from the beginning or you're just finding out who we are, when it is time and we can be with each other again, your safety will always be the number one priority. Not only your physical safety, but your health your mental health, all these environments. Like we've always tried to, if you walked into a Shine Down show, we want to have you float out. Yes. If you know what I mean. Oh um, yeah. But we will we, we will never ever sacrifice and we will never cut corners when it comes to the public safety of our audience, no matter what country we're playing, no matter what tour we're on. So please be rest assured we would never put you in a dangerous environment like that. We will be with each other again. Um, it may take a little bit of time. Uh, but always know that we always have your your safety as our number one priority. Well, I personally can't wait. So Neither good luck we. with your projects. And uh, I look forward to seeing them all come into fruition soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much to, to, to not only giving me this time today, but to all the fans that ask questions and just to the radio and all the support, your family to us. You have been for two decades now. One of the stations that is, you know, goes all the way back to the very first single fly from the inside. And, uh, you know, that's two decades worth of music to, to right now. And here's to another two decades, three decades, as long as we can keep doing it. So thank you very much for all your support. Absolutely. Thank you. It's awesome. It's our pleasure. All right, we appreciate you. Brent right, Smith, so Later, guys and girls. Bye.